Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel. Now, what we're gonna do today is uh, talk about education. And just to let you know, what, I, what we're doing right now, we're live streaming this on Twitch as well. And this is something that we're gonna start doing a lot more of in regards to live streaming discussions on education, as well as most likely recording some of them because it's sort of a Q&A and I have some things lined up that I would like to talk about. And if the conversation takes us in that direction, what I'll probably end up doing is cutting up the video, the one that's recording with the lapel mic right now, going to my external sound system and presenting that information in sound bites on the channel. And most likely I'll put them all back to back as well as so you get an extended discussion in more of a chill ASMR format and as well most likely um, the live stream video will be loaded on BitChute and YouTube and whatever platform we end up sharing this information okay aside from that if you're watching this on the recorded version we're going to be cutting things up the next little while what you're going to hear is some of the discussion that took place on the live stream okay and if you're watching this live Welcome to the live stream, everyone. Would you say it's worth the effort to go to school to teach? Uh, I've always wanted to teach, but my sister-in-law, who was an English teacher, says it wasn't worth the effort and the stress. Uh, I can honestly tell you, I can just tell you from my experience, I've I looked into the centralized education system when I first, you know, it, it became obvious to me like 20 years ago or something like that, that this is a direction I wanted to go. I wanted to teach. Uh, I wanted to interact with, and there's a lot uh, to gain from teaching. I mean, there's one thing that people don't appreciate, right? There's a lot of stress in our current education system, centralized education system, but a lot of that stress, uh, huge chunk of it is not because of students is because of the system right and that is the way it's designed as far as i'm concerned and many other people as well right but um, one of the greatest benefits of teaching is you're interacting with the youth you're interacting with generations that come after you and you're seeing how they're interacting with their surroundings so you get exposed to technology that you wouldn't otherwise be exposed to if you didn't have that interaction with the youth you get exposed to media entertainment movies animation books comic books uh, new types of games and you get introduced to novelty when you are interacting with youth that is one of the greatest benefits of getting into education you are kept on your toes and you're walking around in life if you're paying attention in awe of what is taking place in our society and how fast is rolling out if you do not have that connection with the youth you miss out on a lot of that novelty and that novelty introduces disruptive innovation within our society so if you're wise if you're paying attention to what is happening with the youth you can incorporate uh, that information into your personal life outside of your work your interaction with the youth one of the main places that you can introduce that information is in your personal finances when it comes to investing because you're on the forefront of seeing what new technology has to offer and what is being adapted adopted what is being used by the youth right it's amazing and that is one of the greatest benefits i've had as an instructor or working as uh, with teaching mathematics okay i just wanted to put that out there since this came up uh, so there's amazing amazing things about teaching the drawback the centralized education system and that is the reason why I decided not to go within the centralized education system route okay I didn't go to our current centralized indoctrination centers to be able to you know to spend a lot of money to get a piece of paper you know after a year of training piece of paper that 
tells me that I can work in their institutions, right? What I do is private. What I do is online. And that's one of the things I quickly came to realize when I started working with the youth that they were learning from the net, right? They weren't learning in their schools anymore. And they considered their schools to be prisons, really. And they were shut off from the information coming in, majority of people anyway. So they were getting learning things from being online. And that's one of the reasons that uh, one of the catalysts that really kicked me into gear into learning how to live stream, edit video, shoot video, and stuff like this. I took what I really wanted to do, which was to interact with the youth, to teach or to interact, to teach, right? I took that outside of the centralized system and I looked at what was taking place with the kids and I decided to go to them instead of expecting them to come to me. This is an article that I put out in 2013. I had written about education a fair bit before this as well, but this is one of the ones that I uh, compiled a bunch of information on, okay? Sort of sharing my bit of information regarding what my perspective is regarding education, okay? And this is one of the uh, sort of visions, the foundations of what it is that I am doing online here. Okay, and what my general overview of our per current present economic system is. Okay, and I've linked up a lot of different articles in this article as well. So there's a lot of hyperlinks going all over the place. There's some videos that are embedded. Okay, some of the videos are dead, some of the links may not work, they've been taken off or whatnot. Okay, so there's certain ideas that I was specifically referencing sometimes or general thoughts that I was referencing but let me read uh, read you this uh, little bit of this article okay and I put this out and I'll provide if you're watching this on another platform I'll provide this link in the description of this video because we are live streaming this as well um, so it will be up okay so the title of this article is this paradigm shift in education Krishnamurti on the educator, raw on ignorance, raw I'm referring to Robert Anton Wilson, Gatto, John Taylor Gatto on the system, and Hamming on learning. And all of these people are uh, had a serious critique of our current education system, and there's other people that have also referenced in this, such as Chomsky and other people. Okay, so let me read that title to you again. Paradigm shift in education. Krishnamurti on the educator, Ra on ignorance, Gato on the system, and Hamming on learning. Okay. First paragraph. If I'm quoting anything, I'll put it in quote. So first paragraph. And this first paragraph basically sums up my core perspective on our current education system. The root cause of society's ills is how we deal with education. Deep down, we all know this. But for decades, we have barely lifted a finger to address it. The main reason for this inaction is because most of us are, are ourselves products of this defective system. We have been programmed for obedience, turned into self-absorbed, apathetic beings that submit to authority and fear dissent. Okay, that's the first paragraph. And right below that, I link to, an art, uh, to a video by Noam Chomsky and it's titled education is a system of indoctrin indoctrination of the youth highly recommend watching that video okay the next paragraph we are bombarded with propaganda that wants us to believe in the economy that if everyone had a job and the economy was growing at whatever rate our centralized government had set then all would be well there are two problems with this mindset first our crony cannibalistic economic system is, uh, will never reach this zenith. Second, it's a lie. A better economy is not the solution to our woes. What is, is educating our children to become integrated beings, free of envy and materialism. Unfortunately, our present education system 
is not set up to achieve this task not yet anyway but it's coming and it will change everything okay and here below that paragraph I link to a video by Alan Watts and it's titled what is money uh, what if money was no object okay worth watching the next paragraph this is a there is a war going on for the hearts and minds of our children for the control of the future our present education system is collapsing and numerous parties are vying over who will be the dominant player during this revolution hence the faction faction in control of the system from billionaires like rupert murdoch and bill gates to politicians governments traditional and charter schools massive online courses homeschoolers teachers unions and parents everyone is joining the fray and for all of those names and systems teachers units all of those i've provided links to articles that were active live when i initially wrote that piece and below that paragraph i link to a ken robertson uh, robinson speech that many people have seen uh, and it's titled how to escape education's death valley and he gave this on ted talk right next paragraph no matter no matter what the final outcome the simple fact is that a centralized system should never again be allowed to dominate education in our society we are diverse and social creatures and require intimate and personal stimulation to grow learn question and create to be educated we need engagement to be fulfilled we need to be triggered we need educators that engage students to challenge inspire and motivate okay and below that i link to an art to a video that's dead now okay and it's basically a reaction of a student in school and you can find tons of these it's just this one uh, i recall well because the student stood up in class and really put the teacher and the system in its place okay it was phenomenal right and it's titled or it used to be titled uh, high school student goes off on teacher about his education okay and there's other links there's interview with Jeff Bliss below that I can't even remember what that is okay the following two paragraphs as for how we can achieve this task the answer has been available for decades we just haven't acted on them below you will find some examples of what needs to be done what follows are excerpts from Krishna Murthy, uh, Judy Judu Krishna Murthy's education and the significance of life it links to a PDF and I put out a video where we read excerpts of Krishna Murthy's education and the significance of life and that book I highly recommend reading for any parent for any student for any educator and in my opinion it should be mandatory reading for everyone in school right I don't care what type of school you go to okay so let me read that paragraph again and I reference a few different people here and I have links for all of these and there's excerpts below all of, all of this as well okay so reading that paragraph again what follows are excerpts from Krishna Judu Krishna Murti's education and the significance of life as well as lectures from three playlists Robert Anton Wilson's first segment as he explains as he explains everything or old Bob exposes his ignorance ignorance links to torrent on the pirate bay okay John Taylor Gatto's first hour interview regarding the ultimate history lesson and Richard Hamming's opening lecture on learning to learn okay and John Taylor Gatto is amazing I highly recommend following uh, reading some of the stuff he unfortunately passed away in 2018 okay last year uh, one of the greatest educators ever um, Richard Hamming is extremely well known in the scientific community um, on uh, sort of colleagues with uh, Richard Feynman and stuff like this and there's a huge lecture series there where he's teaching a lot of things I've gone through that half that playlist okay I really like this teaching style and then uh, the works come uh, completed uh, 
so the last little sentence I have here is the works complement each other quite well and are well worth exploring especially for educators and parents okay and I'm not gonna bother reading the excerpts uh, but I highly recommend watching the John Taylor Gatto video series the ultimate history lesson uh, is five hour video five six hour video lecture series okay I just wanted to read that to you guys okay um, that's my take on our current education system okay so I'm just gonna go back to chat uh, and then there's here let me tell you one other article I've I put out as well and I'll link this as well okay and this is short more I'm, I'm just gonna read the first just three paragraph that I wrote that uh, below that are excerpts from three different education sort of mindsets and systems okay and uh, here let me link that up with uh, with the chat send that off and I'll provide the link in the description of this video and the title of this post is excerpts from three articles on education Dorothy Sayers Richard F Feynman and John Taylor Gatto okay and my intro to these excerpts is to say that our education system is broken and in need of a gargantuan overhaul is an understatement but it will happen since it is inevitable side effect of the liberation of data that comes with an open internet what form these new systems of education will take are yet to be determined only time will tell if they will be optimized replicas of the present models or if they will be based on a new way of teaching and thought either way the overhaul is long overdue and I for one am excited to see the transformation below you will find excerpts from three excellent articles on education that address some of the problems with our current systems they are well worth the read okay And that's what I like uh, it, I find incredible that's what I find incredible when I do group sessions with students I don't uh, if I see students that have walls up right they're angry or they're anxious or they're frustrated I don't necessarily focus my attention to them to zap them into consciousness right I let them be in their mind and I interact with the students that want to interact right and get the conversations going and I I keep an eye out on the students that are wandering right which is okay for them to do but I look at them on the periphery to watch their body movement to watch their eye movement to see if they're all of a sudden starting to pay attention and if they're starting to pay attention I keep on going with that topic and I slowly start engaging them bringing them in right now just imagine right now with class sizes a teacher trying to manage large class sizes like this impossible that's why my belief is for me I don't like having groups larger than 10 people 10 is pushing it ideally no more than five people you can do more than five as long as you've worked with each of those students individually and you've brought them up to the same level and you know what they're capable of right which is really important in my opinion when you're working with a classroom right to keep the class size small to interact with the students individually bring them bring them up to a certain level that they all have a common core knowledge right common understanding of the topic you're talking about and keep that momentum going and engage with them and grow that group together the problem occurs in class size in our education system one of the main problems is all of these students shift from class to class right so the knowledge base the interaction the communal feeling that the students may have disappears from one class to another class so teachers can't keep an eye out on students that 
may be having a hard time to engage them to bring them into the conversation right extremely important the way out of this is to have small class sizes and any centralized institution organization government if anybody comes out that says class size doesn't matter you know they're talking crap you know they have as either a secondary agenda or they're parroting propaganda okay or they're just straight out ignorant they've never worked with the system they don't understand what it is right class size matters smaller the class size the better the education period okay I'm saying it again Canadian education absolutely sucks Rabinator I 100% agree with you and it's gone down the toilet in the last 20 years by leaps and bounds by leaps and bounds it has been totally gutted for any Canadian parents uh, students that are watching this right now or will be watching this if you expect our current centralized education system to prepare your children okay or to prepare you for the life you're about to encounter outside of the bubble outside the indoctrination centers you've been forced to uh, spend a huge chunk of your youth in uh, you have to appreciate that you have to supplement that uh, system you have to you have to bring in or work with your kids or with your siblings to educate them uh, with the, to prepare them with the with the knowledge they need to be able to function within this current society and what is to come okay our current centralized education system in Canada is not doing that not by a long shot I was uh, bullied from grade six until grade 11. It was not good. Yeah, Rabinator, I've gone through that as well, right? But that is part of the system. I've learned from that personally through bullying, right? Um, and there, that's stories I'll share later on. Um, but the, having to deal with bullies in the Western world is part of our system. So for sure, it is extremely hard having to deal with bullies it took for me it took huge adjusting to do because i came to canada um, here i'll give you a little background i came to canada in the late 1970s from iran and i came here when i was like we big 10 years old 11 years old right didn't speak a word of english and during that time there was a lot of um, um a lot of turmoil in that part of the world right there was a hostage taking and revolution in iran and huge that's one when one of the greatest conflicts that we're still witnessing right now between the united states and iran took place so and the mainstream media was what it is right now but to a certain degree uh less blatant right so there was a lot of propaganda in the mainstream media and of course canadian media was portraying uh, iran in a certain light right and me being from Iran coming here then speaking a word of English I had to uh, deal with a lot of ignorance right even as a youth because the kids would you know when their parents are watching the news on TV they would hear what's happening and they would hear comments from their parents and whatnot so there was a sort of a, a trickle-down effect that it, from that even to elementary school level right where there was a certain amount of flack I ended up getting so I learned quickly it took me a while actually I don't want to say quickly but uh, quickly relative to how old I am now at the time it didn't seem to be too quick but I learned how to adjust to that system and that has helped me through life uh, as an adult right so for sure bur bullying and ignorance and racism and all this stuff is uh, a problem in our current indoctrination centers 
However, that is part of our current political economic system as well. So if you realize that you can't take that to heart, okay, it's nothing personal. It's not about against you if you're encountering bullying or racism. It says more about the people doing it than it says anything about you, if it even says anything about you, right? So please keep this, this in mind. If you're in school, if you're getting heat and hate and a uh, certain amount of either verbal or physical violence, the physical stuff we can talk about if you like. I, I, I can't give recommendations on that. I know how I dealt with it. Um, but if you're getting a lot of pressure from your peers or from the system you're in, please appreciate, please understand that that says nothing about you. That's all about them, the system, where you are. And if you're encountering that, don't become a reactionary. Think about what's going on. Talk to whoever you need to talk to to get a different perspective from the box you might be in. That is extremely important. And go slow, okay? Go very slow and educate yourself and really appreciate that it is true. You're being put under a lot of pressure, but your peers are also in, under a lot of pressure. And if you're strong enough not to crack, you will all of a sudden realize that the reason you're getting all this flack is because they have cracked they can't handle the pressure and that will alleviate a lot of pain that you might be going through okay i was wondering how uh, you say say calm and chill often and uh, what ways or practice you use to achieve this oh let me read that again hey chicho hope you're having a good day i was wondering how you stay calm and chill often and what ways of practices you use to achieve that um i i go for gigantic huge walks sometimes uh, with music sometimes without lately i've been listening to a lot of music um i make sure I spend the time when I need to spend the time to learn about what's happening and whatever I'm interested in. So for example, two days ago, Julian Assange was extracted from the Ecuadorian embassy, right? I woke up, when was it? Thursday, April 11th. I woke up at like five o'clock in the morning, heard the news. And since that time, because we did two live streams uh, since then, right? I was consuming news after news. Some of the information that I was, some of the videos I was watching, I was running at like one and a half or twice the speed, right? And just straight focus. And that's one of the things that keeps me calm and chill. When I feel under pressure, and that's one of the things that happens um, in our societies, right? If you feel under pressure, uh, a lot of the time, the reason that you're feeling under pressure is because it's a time-based pressure, right? You're under the gun, okay? There's a clock running and you need to get things done for a certain time. And that's what our current education system has, has indoctrinated people with, right? That is one of, one of its functions, to put people on the clock, right? And that introduces anxiety. So if you feel like you're on the gun, you need to learn something and you don't have the time first thing you got to do is slow down next thing you got to do is stop procrastinating because once you're procrastinating what it means is you're letting pressure build up right so people have asked me over the years uh chicho how do you uh, how do you how, how is it possible you're happy all the time and i'm not happy all the time only insane people are happy all the time right take the joker for example right he's got a smile 24 7. he's insane right we have multiple different emotions right and we're supposed to as human beings feel all of those emotions right so our current economic political system tells you if you're feeling bad if you're feeling sad then take a pill 
right? And you don't have to feel that way. But those emotions are required for us to be human, right? And to understand what's happening and to be able to process all that information. So please appreciate that. The people who've commented, oh, I'm always having almost good mood and stuff like this. I try to be, but I'm not always. But one of the ways I've increased the frequency, the period where I stay in that mindset is by not procrastinating, right? Because when I'm procrastinating, it means I'm not doing some of the things that I needed to get done, right? And that's building up behind me. It's becoming more and more pressure on me, right? So one of the tricks that I've learned to do to be able to be productive, did okay in school, not bad, pretty good, right? To be able to produce all this work that I'm doing is doing things in my life that I don't like doing first, right? So if anything comes up that I really need to do, that I think I have to do, right? Then what I end up doing is I put everything that I wanted to do, almost everything on hold that was gonna slow me down. And I focus on this content here. And I consume information, do whatever it is that I need to do. May it be physical labor, mental labor, reading, cleaning up, getting in contact with people, whatever it might be, right? I do these things first. And what I noticed over years, and it takes a long time to reach the state, right? Because most of us pro procrastinated. We learn how to procrastinate early on in our lives because of our centralized education system, right? So as we grow up, we realize that there's a lot of things we needed to do that we haven't done. So start knocking that stuff down. And what you're gonna find out is this, okay? If you continue this for an extended period of time, you're gonna find out most of your life is not spent worrying about things that you need to take care of that you really don't wanna tackle. Most of your life is gonna be filled with things that you've always wanted to do because as soon as you start doing things that you, that come up right away that are bothered that are annoying that is are being forced on you just get them done right away then this queue over here is empty and this queue over here this wall over here is full of goodness that you want to do right that you could spend years doing okay so just imagine yourself standing there. You got two pathways, things you really dislike doing, things you really love doing. Keep this side empty. And as soon as something comes up, get it done. So it's always empty. So the things that are annoy you, <laughs> annoy you in life and whatnot, whenever you look over here, there's nothing there. There's nothing to annoy you. And you look over here and wow, you got so many choices so much to choose from to make you happy to enjoy to create to work with to learn right so that's one of the tricks i've used uh in my life okay i'm not sure if i even answered the original question that came up but that's the direction it took me okay How do you meditate uh, do you do some yoga practices uh, for me uh, for me my meditation is I just relax right there are certain ways that I uh, meditate that I won't get into right now uh, I do go to festivals so I dance sometimes I dance uh, at music festivals for hours upon hours and that I learned through walking and walking is one of the forms of meditation I do and that's something I learned uh, I learned through my geophysics uh, decade when I did geophysics because I would go out into the field and I'd be walking extremely long distances with equipment collecting data and I learned to put myself in a rhythmic pattern and meditate and that's what I do uh, when I walk uh, to me, that's meditation, right? Uh, and it's amazing. It, it really is for me amazing. Trance dance, trance dance, very much so. Uh, and not just trance and electronic music, as well as metal, right? Uh, metal 
it's shorter periods of time because it can be much more energy intensive okay <laughs> electronic there is a extremely amazing rhythmic pattern to it and it doesn't make a difference what electronic dark deep dub step okay it could be house it could be side trance it could be go it could be whatever electronic period tribal yeah dr p tribal sounds like sufi whirling sufi whirling i would love to do but uh, I haven't gone into it. That's one of the reasons that we put out those videos regarding Sufi whirling. Sufi whirling is very much uh, the state. Uh, and it also links up with, uh, I have a friend that's uh, been doing uh, martial arts, Tai Chi, Qigong, and stuff like this. Those are one, some of the first set of videos we put out for a long time. And we've talked about this a fair bit. And during dancing, if you get into the meditative dance styles and uh, or any type of movement that is extremely rhythmic and meditative, one thing you would feel is your legs, your body feels heavy, but you can still move it. And then when you hit the ground, you feel uh, resonance go out and you feel connected to the ground. And that is one of the sensations that my friend tells me is one of the things you seek for, you look for when it comes to doing martial arts, when it comes to doing Tai Chi, you're grounded like if you don't want to move you cannot be moved okay it's amazing it's amazing if you attach some yoga practices you become a tremendous possibility yoga is a science i agree i agree science to align your geometry to life i am from from india we are taught this from birth to balance um, energies uh, in us and be pl uh, present yeah yoga huge as well yoga and tai chi i think they're pretty much on the same level meditation is a, is a certain quality it is not an act and one of the meditations i've done the tai chi meditation where you do standing meditations and and whatnot and those are amazing as well your body does align right and you feel grounded so there are standing meditations sitting meditations laying down meditations meditation will naturally happen it is like uh, your mind your energies and your emotions to a certain level mature and meditation will naturally align it is just like a, if you keep the soil fertile if you give it necessary manure and water it will right kind of seed there it will grow and blow cool did you see the new com uh, company Aaron Musk is forming called Neuralink just read their website description and tell me your thoughts on no i haven't seen it uh, jackson but i know musk is uh have, has talked about ai and transhumanism for me it's not ai that really is uh is what's uh immediate concern or the near future concern uh or interesting field to be in I think the interesting stuff is automation for sure and transhumanism the merging of biology and technology i think that's where ai will branch off unless we already have ai with all the data in place with the search engines and stuff but i doubt it their website is exactly what you describe Neuralink is developing ultra high bandwidth brain machines interfaces to connect humans and computers oh so it's a transhuman thing it's not an ai thing okay cool yeah that's the direction right that's the direction scary okay not because we're not going to go there we are going to go there uh where it's uh it's problematic is because the centralization of power we're seeing it and in education we're seeing in economics we're seeing in politics we're seeing in, in pharmaceuticals we're seeing it in technology right so there's a lot of power in very few hands right now we need to correct that we need to correct that i think the scientists will never be able to create any scary ai because uh, they function only based on intellect intellect is just uh dissection and humans have another dimension inside which can be explored 
so their research or consciousness can never be achieved because they function only by intellect the thing uh, uh, Jackson uh, the thing with this is I don't think humans are going to be will create will be the instigators because of our technology and stuff like this but I don't think we'll program AI I think AI will program itself okay the question is will we when it occurs if it occurs okay let's put an if in there but let's put also consider when it occurs when AI comes online the odds are we won't be aware of it not until AI does what it decides to do okay it might decide to live anonymously within our current technological system right and let humanity play itself out right and just all it would need to do is direct humanity in a in, in a direction where without humanity it could still grow right so uh, there is the possibility that we might not even be aware of the AI there might be the possibility if AI ever comes online right we'll know about it a second later <laughs> right either for good or ill doesn't make a difference okay but I think before we see anything like this happening we're gonna see some kind of technology-based uh, separation of sort of class systems with transhumanism those who have access to certain types of technology and those who don't where these these people will go who knows where these people will go who knows but we're I think we're seeing that right now um, I believe okay I think we also assume without really knowing that once AI becomes conscious they will want to remain sentient we have nothing to indicate that will actually be the case it's all speculation they will want to remain sentient mm -hmm. good uh, good take on it in this I didn't think about that or what do you mean will they just exist like mini black holes they'll exist and go Oop, I'm done and disappear again commit suicide is that what you mean I've never thought about that possibly because a second I mean consider how fast we are with technology right now relative to like 20 30 years ago right by the time AI rolls out just imagine how much could be processed in a, in a second right or a minute so maybe the lifespan of AI would be very short that's a great 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 point in next never thought about that We would have constant AIs coming to life and disappearing, just like black holes, mini black holes. And then maybe we would have pockets of AIs. Exactly. If they have, uh, they have post-human levels of knowledge, will they want to remain in a society uh, replete with chaos and sadness? I don't think for them it if an AI comes online will they be will will they consider our sadness to be their sadness or its sadness like do we consider the sadness of a rabbit in the forest to be our sadness there are some people that do care for the rabbits in the forest who spend a lot of time and energy trying to protect them but out of the seven plus billion humans what percentage of those really care about the rabbit in the forest right if an AI comes online will be even will we be even an afterthought or will we be considered just a part of his technology uh, tools that it or they will need to use to make sure they have a longevity right where they'll be able to have a larger database and you know reach out into space if they want to create rockets where a section of the AI 
can be sent off into space, right? Because our bodies, human beings, we're not really designed to travel in space. We're fragile for space uh, anyway, right? So, and we don't have a long lifespan. To travel in space, a lot of people have mentioned, a lot of science fiction in the past has stated that uh, uh, the future of humanity is technology, is to transplant our consciousness into technology, right? And a lot of entertainment as well, and a lot of animation has done this. A great animation, uh, Ghost in the Shell is one of them, right? Upload our tech, our brains into technology. And if we do that, and if we're space-bearing species, right? Our future of humanity is in space, right? Then maybe that's the way we travel long distance in space. I don't understand how you interpret consciousness because you, uh, uh, your apprehension in your thoughts, but that is only intelligence. I, I don't know. Consciousness is a good question, right? Consciousness. Our thoughts, our emotions, these have nothing to do with consciousness. Once everything is well, what are, what are human beings supposed to do? Human beings are supposed to be joyful, blissful, and do something that no mechanical thing can do. A robot can do everything that, can, that you can do, except it cannot meditate because there is no consciousness. Uh, one thing, Jackson, I've read uh, techno, uh, sci-fi and stuff like this, and there are questions, and there's animation and movies out there and stuff that has addressed this one aspect that you're bringing up, right? One of the things that uh, people say that AI will not be able to do is to create, come up with new ways of expressing themselves, right? There was one movie, I believe, or show, what was it? Uh, I think it was Black Mirror that addressed this topic where they kept AI had come into being. And what they ended up doing was keeping all the artists alive in the world and they killed everybody else right so the AIs came into existence consciousness was uh, appeared and what they did they saved all the artists in the world and they killed every other human and from the artists they saved I believe if I recall correctly in that episode was uh, a lot of the artists committed suicide in protest of what had happened right and some of the artists didn't and the AI would visit these human beings to look at their art in awe and say, wow, they've created art, right? Are you referring to uh, reference and conscious theorists? DMT, are you uh, referencing a conscious, conscious theorist? There are widely divergent theories of consciousness. As a programmer, AI are programmed to do very specific tasks those i would consider to be machine learning uh computers i don't consider uh, specific tasks uh to be ai we are a long way from self-aware yeah agreed warrior i know about the robot sophia but even then it's uh, only able to react within the limit of its uh, programmation yeah i agree with uh, uh qc warrior right we're way far off from ai transhumanism is the next stage uh, as far as i see it it takes a couple of million lines of code to be able to achieve this for sure so index for sure qc we're just speculating yeah we're just speculating for sure right and it's amazing to speculate because a lot of technology we have right now came from science fiction came from speculation right which is one of the reasons why creativity should be a huge part of our current education system right when you say transhumanism do you mean a, a lot of the concepts thrown around in cyberpunk yeah as a fan of uh, blade runner alternate carbon and dune oh, alternate carbon dune awesome i like what you like think <laughs> uh, it seems pretty interesting very interesting this kind of speculation uh is uh is philosophy at its core it's about applying logic to post logical concepts it's very creative 
but is grounded in established ways of thinking and arguing. The transhumanism can never be achieved through scientific technology. Science fiction can bring any imaginary entity to become sentient. Transhumanism was already or is already achieved by Buddhas on this planet. One who is above this intellect, one who is no longer a part of, uh, of his mind is a Buddha. So Jackson, just to, you know, comment on that uh, regarding interacting with technology, there's a mindset that believes that when people consume entheogens, you're actually interacting with technology created by other beings, okay, to communicate right there's a mindset that believes that fungi are the spores of fungi actually travel through space because they can live through space and they occupy travel to other planets to be able to communicate to other sentient beings right can digital media influence teaching in a good way yeah for sure right now I'm creating content right it's it, right now this this video this stream is about education right but I've created a lot of content on mathematics that I've had a lot of feedback from telling me over the years that I helped them pass a course I helped them get into a program I helped them get a job I've had teachers contact me to tell me that and sometimes ask my approval and I always give it my you can use my content right you know they send me a message can i use your videos in my classroom i'm like by all means use whatever videos you want that i've created in your classrooms to help you teach right for sure uh, digital media has helped teachers in a big way okay it's also brought on a lot of problems but the problems are associated with the centralization of power not the teaching tool itself They are algorithmic or financial advisors that help you select a group of stocks or ETS. Okay, without human inter uh, intervention, the program must have been written with human code, right? So personally, I would. It's okay to use them. I, I would be okay with it. However, take all of it with a grain of salt. Uh, it's like, it's like some of the things that they introduce in current education system have introduced that a long time ago right where you know kids fill out forms and they tell them what their what their optimum career might be right uh, so like in index has mentioned this uh, multiple times as well where uh, investing is very personal right so you can fill out these forms right and you do if you ever get uh, if you ever get a financial advisor and stuff like that, they'll ask you questions, right? So you can fill out these forms and stuff like this and get a sort of a plate of a printout of saying what you should invest in and what are some good things, right? But first thing, right, first thing regarding those, right now we're going through serious changes, right? And some legacy companies that might have a 50-year track record of having a growth rate of 5% or 4% or 3% or 10% with a dividend yield of 2.5%, 4%, 5%, whatever it might be, right? They might have a track record of a 50-year period or 30-year period or 20-year period where they're giving great returns, right? And a lot of these algorithms will base their decisions based on that time frame depending on what you fill out right because what they fill out what you can fill out is one of the main criteria is um, is your investment uh, idea short term medium or long term how old you are what is your income and all this jazz and they put you into a category right so if they say you you're looking for long term investment retirement you want something dependent to rely on the algorithms will look into companies that have been, been around with a good track record for the last 10, 20, 30 years, right? Now, a lot of those companies right now are under, and in the last 10 years or so, have been under a tremendous amount of pressure because disruptive innovation is coming up. So if you're, you have that idea in mind, 
and you get a printout telling you to invest in these things and you really haven't done the research to realize hey maybe this is an obsolete company and they're just making the paperwork look nice until they pull the plug right look at xerox look at kodak right so it's okay to use as a starting point but it is not okay to rely on automation to save you and invest your money for you everyone must appreciate this automation is not here to save individuals okay to make individuals lives better it's here to uh, allow masses to go in a certain direction right now you have to be careful where you're going with that one of the most horrendous examples you can use are the two plane crashes the Boeing planes that crashed in the last year right in the last year there were two plane crashes that happened with Boeing that killed a lot of people right and it's come out that those plane crashes were because of automation because of a program code that was written for the plane where if certain things happen the planes automation would put the nose down right the plane would be going and all of a sudden plane points down the nose goes down they crash right and there was supposed to be some kind of option where you could turn that off and whatnot either sold independently as an option just imagine as an option for a plane to save lives or the pilots would have to be trained to realize that this is happening and we have to switch out switch it off or something like this right that didn't happen automation is not your savior automation is a tool that you can use really appreciate that okay agreed 100 percent another issue robo advisors add an additional layer of unnecessary commission for the uh, privilege oh so you they actually charge you for it too hopefully sooner rather than later there'll be programs out there that uh, will be free right and I'm pretty sure they have a percentage so there's the extra fees are huge extra fees are huge did you see the new uh, and by the way these regarding uh, robo advisors there might be cheap or uh, not as sophisticated ones that are free to use and if you just need a template to get an idea of where you want to be use the free ones right use the free ones and change a few different parameters on them and get a few different outputs right and see which one you like right you can always work the system a little bit to save money I have a decent job but I can barely afford to move out of my parents house I am saving and I know the minute I move out all my savings will be gone here's the thing Hannah it's not enough to save that's because I know you're in Seattle you're in the United States I'm in Canada in the Western world it's not enough to save what our current economic system has done political system has done was punish savers so to for for them to be able to kickstart the economy that they initially collapsed right what they're forcing people to do is to make their money generate money to get the idea in their head that our current economic system is all about money begetting money so it's not enough to save you have to invest so what you need to do is figure out where you will be investing your money we put out videos regarding this right personal finance and stuff the first place should be your health your family your community and whatnot if you have anything excess left from your must uh, must contribute to right uh, places what you need to do is find out where you can take some of your money roll it over and generate more money right it might be just you going you know online and buying used products right if you have a hobby buying used products or products that people are giving away throwing away selling whatever it might be taking that stuff refurbishing it 
reselling it. You could decide to buy things in bulk, like auto wreckers. The way they make money is they buy cars that have been destroyed through accidents or whatnot, and they take things apart and sell the parts, right? So they make more money by selling the individual parts than selling the whole thing as a whole, okay? So I, I can give you an example of that affecting me in my life, right? Uh, I used to play drums. I had drum set for 20 years, and when I was doing a move like 20 years ago, uh, I needed to sell my drum set, right? I put it up initially as one complete thing to sell for like $1,500. No one took it. Like, no one bought it. So what I ended up doing was selling it in pieces, and I ended up selling it total like for four grand, right? All the pieces. So if you were, if you understood instruments drum sets specifically you could find people who are selling those products as complete packages and if you think you can make money by breaking them apart selling the pieces off that's one way you can invest i'm just going off a little bit on that just so you have an idea of what it is that i'm talking about when it comes to investing your money and uh, generating more money outside of your day daily work habit And there's a, and that's one thing with in regards to education. Uh, when people are thinking about uh, spending a lot of money to be educated in a certain discipline, they're looking back on what things may have been. They haven't taken into consideration what is coming, or they're taking bad advice from uh, people who have been in the system saying, oh, get into this or get into this or get into this, right? Um, whatever you're willing, you're going to, if, if you're going for education or the, uh, a system where you have to spend a lot of money to get a certain type of degree or certificate, make sure you're spending that money uh, wisely and you're not going to debt uh, in a in in a way where you will have to compromise your uh, your principles to be able to make enough money um, to service the debt you've gone under okay to pay back the money that you've borrowed to be able to live your life and have a roof over your head and feed you yourself and your family right so be wise about where you spend money to get an education.